What's up everyone and welcome to another episode of Variant. The superhero blockbuster movie season is just around the corner and kicking things off on March 8th is Marvel Studios' Captain Marvel. So over the next few weeks we're going to be doing some episodes around several of the key characters appearing in the movie. This will include the Skrulls, Captain Marvel herself, and the focus of today's episode, Nick Fury. The intense and mysterious leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. has been one of the most important parts of the EMCU since he first appeared in the post credit scene of 2008's Iron Man. And all of these years later, we're finally getting his origin and backstory in Captain Marvel. Well, that being the case, there's no better time to take a look at his comic book history. So let's roll that bumper. Nick Fury was created by comic greats Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. He first appeared in Sgt. Fury and his Howling Commandos issue 1 in May of 1963. The comic was a World War II combat series that has a cigar-smoking Nick Fury as the leader of an elite U.S. Army unit. But when 1965 rolled around, Lee and Kirby decided to update the character and pull him out of his World War II era and bring him into present, making him into a spy similar to that of James Bond and the leader of an espionage agency called S.H.I.E.L.D. in Strange Tales issue 135. As many of us know, Fury has since made a bunch of appearances in other Marvel books, acting as a middleman between the United States government or the United Nations and various superheroes. And as we've seen in the MCU, he's the guy who makes sure everyone gets along or at least tries to. Fun fact, it's eventually revealed that Fury takes a special medication called the Infinity Formula that stopped his aging, which allows him to be active despite the fact he's nearly a century old. But now, let's take a look at his comic book origins. <laughs> Okay, so there's two different main versions of Nick Fury. You have the original one created by Stanley and Jack Kirby. This is the Fury from the main 616 Marvel Universe. And then you have Ultimate Nick Fury from Earth 1610. This is the Nick Fury that the majority of people are familiar with, as this is the version Marvel Studios chose to be part of their cinematic universe, played by the amazing Samuel L. Jackson. And since I feel like I really can't talk about one without the other, I'm going to give you guys both of their origins. Let's start with the original. Nicholas Joseph Fury was born in New York City in the 1920s, specifically in the area familiar to Daredevil fans, Hell's Kitchen. When Fury was in his 20s, he was drafted into the United States Army to fight the Nazis in World War II. Once in the army, it was clear that he was a natural soldier and leader, and soon became a sergeant. He was so good at what he did, he was asked to lead a hand-picked squad of highly trained soldiers. And if you've seen Captain America the First Avenger, this squad should be very familiar to you, because that's a squad that would soon become known as the famous Howling Commandos. Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos fought through a massive chunk of World War II. They went on missions all over the place like France, Greece, Belgium, Holland, and even inside Nazi Germany itself. Imagine what their bar talk was like. Because of this, the Howling Commandos would run into and also fight alongside Captain America. Because let's be honest, one of Cap's hobbies, especially back then, was punching Nazis in the face. And who could blame them? But the Commandos didn't just team up with Cap, they would also fight alongside Cap's Invaders team, who are a group of heroes that joined together to fight the Axis powers during World War II. They consisted of Namor, the Submariner, the Human Torch, not Johnny Storm, the original Android one, Toro, the kid sidekick to the Human Torch, Bucky Barnes, and Captain America. Fury and his Commandos would even meet James Howlett, which as we all know would later go on to become Wolverine. Anyway, Fury was such a good sergeant, he was able to get back most of his commandos after every mission. With that said, that doesn't mean Fury got out of World War II unscathed. And I would be referring to his left eye. That's right, I'm about to tell you how Fury lost his eye. At the end of the war, a grenade was thrown at him and his men, but Fury caught it midair, and when he threw it back, the grenade blew up midair, causing shrapnel and debris to destroy his left eye. So if you ever wondered why Fury wears an eye patch, that is why, at least in this version of Fury. Then when Fury stumbled into a French minefield, he almost got blown into to a jigsaw puzzle, as he put it. The doctor, Professor Sternberg, was able to save him, but he used Fury as a guinea pig to test his affinity formula, which was a chemical found during the war. Well, it worked and slowed down Fury's aging process, as I mentioned earlier, hence its name. Anyway, after World War II, Fury started working for the CIA and the OSS. He was eventually made colonel and ultimately was made the head of S.H.I.E.L.D., and the rest was history. But I've ranted enough about the 616 Nick Fury. Now it's time to talk about the ultimate Nick Fury. He first appeared in Ultimate Team Up Issue 5 in 2001 and was created by Brian Michael Bendis and Mike Alfred. When Nick Fury first appeared in the Ultimate Universe, he looked drastically different from what he looks like now. He looked a lot more like his 616 counterpart with a few differences here and there. But when he popped back up a year later in 2002 in the Ultimates Issue 2, he was redesigned to look just like Samuel L. Jackson which is my personal favorite design for Fury. In fact, he looks so much like Samuel L. Jackson in the comics, they even made a joke of it within the dialogue of one of the issues, where Fury said if they ever made a movie based on the team, Samuel L. Jackson would play him, and that's not even open for debate. Which is hilarious because that's exactly what happened. I mean, how great is it that they purposely designed the character after him, and then six years later, he's playing him in the first Iron Man. So great. 
But now, let's get to his comic book origin. In his Ultimate Tech, Nick Fury also fought for the US in World War II, but during an invasion of Sicily, he and an old relative of Wilson Fisk, along with a paratrooper James Howlett, were caught by American military police as they were looting a house. This led to Fury and Howlett being arrested, and as prisoners, they were used as test subjects for Project Rebirth. During one of the experiments, Fury was injected with a serum that gave him super strength. And with his new strength, he freed himself and the other prisoners, but the scientists who were working on him let him escape as they had all the information they needed from him for the time being. Fury would then go to college in India and later enlist in the US military. He would even eventually be assigned to the SHIELD's Weapon X program during the Gulf War. During this time, Fury and his men were transporting Wolverine in his adamantium cage, but they were ambushed by the Iraqi guerrilla. The ensuing fight would cause Fury to lose sight in his left eye, which is why he has an eye patch in this universe. But Wolverine took a liking to Fury and carried him through the desert back to Allied forces. The next day, Fury was basically already healed, minus his eye of course, and was confronted by General Ross in a hospital. The General had discovered much was weird about Fury and questioned him. After General Ross's so-called death by Colonel Wraith, who was pissed at Ross for canceling government funding to support the Weapon X program, the President asked Fury to become the new director of S.H.I.E.L.D. And Fury's first act as director was to resurrect the Super Soldier program, resulting in the formation of the Ultimates, aka this Earth's Avengers. And like I said with the 616 Nick Fury, the rest was history. Now there's technically a third Nick Fury who I at least want to mention, and that's Marcus Johnson, aka Nick Fury Jr. He's the second and long lost son of Nick Fury Sr., who followed in his father's footsteps by working for S.H.I.E.L.D. and becoming the leader of the Secret Avengers. I know he's not the same Nick Fury, but he looks like him and he's a junior, so I thought it was appropriate to at least mention him. Anyway, next up is Story Arcs, but first, let's thank our sponsor. Today's episode is once again sponsored by our friends over at Verve. Verve spelled VRV has been one of our favorite content streaming platforms for a while now. Why? Because Verve gathers several great channels that feature a ton of great geeky and retro shows and puts them all together in one place. I'm talking about content that you need to be putting in your face holes. And right now you could do that by going to verve.co forward slash variant or just click the link in the description to get a free 30 day ad free trial of Verve Premium. That's 30 days of great content like Dragon Ball Super, My Hero Academia, Bravest Warriors, and Rooster Teeth's Anime Ruby. And speaking of Rooster Teeth, they just launched a new show on Verve called Genlock that features characters voiced by Killmonger himself, Michael B. Jordan, Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones, David Tennant of Doctor Who fame, and the amazing Dakota Fanning. Needless to say, if you haven't already, you need to check that out. But if that's not enough, Verve Premium also gives you unlimited access to a ton of additional content from channels like Crunchyroll, Cartoon Hangover, Nick Splat, High Dive, and Boomerang, just to name a few, all ad free. You could also watch all your shows on the go without an internet connection. Get on it, my friends. Go to verve.co forward slash or click the link in the description and get your free 30-day ad-free trial of Verve Premium now. Then download the Verve app on your iPhone, iPad, Android, Roku, or even your Xbox or PlayStation to start enjoying the goodness from anywhere. And as always, let us know what you're watching so we can talk some geeky goodness. Okay, we spent a little more time than usual on Origins as I had to go through two different versions of Nick Fury. So I'm gonna run through story arcs a little quicker and summarize more than normal. Let's start with Nick Fury's first series, Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos, which ran for 120 issues from 1963 through 1974. During that time, he also appeared in other titles such as Strange Tales, issue 135. This is the book that would turn Fury into a colonel and a James Bond-like spy who ran the covert organization, S.H.I.E.L.D. And for those of you wondering what S.H.I.E.L.D. stands for, it's Supreme Headquarters International Espionage Law Enforcement Division. So now you know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! Then in 1968, we got the ever so popular Jim Steranko, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. title. Even though it only ran for 15 issues, who could forget the Steranko cover? It's all sorts of iconic. In more recent years, Fury was part of Marvel's Secret Invasion event, where he had been AWOL from S.H.I.E.L.D. for years because he knew of an oncoming threat. And it was revealed that one of the Scroll Empire's main goals was to capture Nick Fury. But of course, that didn't happen, and by the end, Fury would join the rest of Marvel heroes in Central Park for the last stand against the Scrolls. This then led to the Dark Reign and Secret Warriors, where after the Scroll Invasion was over, Fury and his team went underground in a secret S.H.I.E.L.D. facility where it was revealed that Hydra had been secretly controlling several government agencies and controlling S.H.I.E.L.D. the entire time. Talk about a twist. Soon after this, we get the Battle Scars six issue series where it's revealed Fury had an affair with a woman. Said woman became pregnant and birthed him a son, Marcus Johnson, AKA Nick Fury Jr., who I mentioned earlier. Then this all leads to Original Sin. 
Here it's revealed that Fury's Infinity formula, which is the formula that keeps him young, had ran out. This resulted in Nick aging at an enormous rate, so Fury's desire to leave a better legacy leads him down a series of events that ultimately ends with him becoming the Unseen, forced to watch Earth in silence. Now that's a very brief rundown of some of the stories the 616 Fury was in. As for Ultimate Nick Fury, he was a massive part of the Ultimates and Ultimate Spider-Man titles. But obviously, the Marvel Ultimate universe isn't nearly as extensive as the main Marvel universe, so there's not as much to say on that front. But don't worry, I'll give you some Ultimate reading recommendations in a bit. For now, powers and abilities. Both the mainstream and ultimate versions of Nick Fury basically have the same abilities, so I'm just gonna generalize. With that said, Nick Fury doesn't have any real superpowers, but he is in the peak of human condition and is an incredible tactician and leader. He's an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat, being skilled in boxing, jiu-jitsu, and taekwondo. In the army, he was also the heavyweight boxing champion. And being the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., Fury has access to some of the world's most advanced weapons and tech. As the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., he's one of the most powerful men on Earth as far as connections and influence go. But now, my friends, I'm sure you want some Nick Fury reading recommendations. Read Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos Volume 1, Nick Fury Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Masterworks Volume 1, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Masterworks Volume 3, Battle Scars, The Ultimates Volume 1 Superhuman, Ultimates Volume 2 Homeland Security, and I'm just gonna say, the entire Ultimate Spider-Man run. First up for Wednesday, February 19th, we have Guardians of the Galaxy Issue 2. Thanos is dead, long live the new Thanos, but who will it be? Will the new Guardians of the Galaxy find that person in time before the universe comes crashing down? Here we have Old Man Quill 2. Due to the popularity of Old Man Logan, Marvel's like, here's an Old Man Peter Quill. So of course, I'm gonna check out at least the first couple of issues. Next, we have Justice League issue 18. The Legion of Doom returns as the history of the Legionnaires Club is revealed. And finally, we have the Teen Titans issue 27. Every Teen Titan has a secret, and they're all spilling out in this issue. And that's gonna bring another episode of Variant to a close, but be sure to check out our link for Verve in the description below. If you click that link, you're gonna get a free 30-day ad-free trial to watch all of your favorite shows from your childhood on the Nick Splat channel, as well as some awesome animes like Dragon Ball Super, Attack on Titan, and so much more. Also, be sure to check out out on social media like our Facebook, our Twitter, and our Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing. That would be much appreciated. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.